Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. Today we will review one video and one blog post, both having to do with job card device functionality available in Dynamics 365. The video was done by Lachan Cash, apologies for not pronouncing it correctly possibly, who is an amazing author from OrganicsX.com. According to his profile, he's currently employed by Microsoft as Solution Architect. His video has to do with the functionality of job card device. But first, we're going to take a look at the uh, Frederick Sater, the author at DynamicsXTips.com, quite prolific author as well. And according to his LinkedIn profile, he is currently employed by AS, which is in Norway. In his blog post, Frederick goes into detail of describing the setups available uh, for the job card device functionality. So he goes into configure job card for devices and explains these options. So let's take a look ourselves. We're first going to go and open production control and navigate to manufacturing execution, configure job card for devices. In here, in order to use the functionality, we need to first assign our user, which is right up here, to the list of assigned user for that specific job card device. There are a number of options here on the top and let's go through them one by one. Report quantity at clock out. If that option is turned on, it would require you to enter quantity, either good quantities or error quantities before clock out can be completed. Lock employee, if it's set to yes, would not log you off after each uh, operation done through the device. For example, it would keep you logged in after you start the job or report the progress of the job. Barcode scanner allows you to scan a job ID by means of a barcode to go directly to that job instead of relying on navigational buttons, which we will take a look in a second part of our video review. Single worker option, which is right up here, would require you to have a user ID that is linked to a worker or employee record. And that employee record has to have time and attendance activated. And that would only allow you to log in with a worker or employee ID or a batch ID of that employee that is linked to your user ID, no one else. If that option is off, you would be able to enter a batch ID of another employee that might not be associated with your user ID. Allow workers to enter personal filter option uh, if it's activated would allow a worker to use a filter button which will, will, will become available to pick and filter active jobs from different resource groups or resources. If that option is off, that filtering button will not be available. And the last but not least is use actual time of registration option. In Frederick's article, it states that use the actual time of registration gives an option only do full time registration or only start and report as finished journal. So it's not really clear to me what it meant. So I had to do a little bit of digging. If that option is turned off, the end time of our process registration would match to our clock out time. For example, let's take a look at three highlighted registrations that were done through a job device. The first one is clocking operation and it was completed at 8.35.09 a.m. And as you can see, the start and end time do match. The second one is a process job or process registration that has quantity and the start time is 8.35.31 and the end time is 8.38.25. So there is three, roughly three minute difference. And the last one is a clock out operation that has a start time that is matching to an end time of our previous process registration. If this option now is turned on, let's take a look at the job registration that happened after that change. So we still have three uh, registration. Clock in was done at 8.22.13. My second registration for the process job Start time is 8.22.25 and the end time is 8.22.28, so roughly three seconds. But you can see that my clock out operation is 8.22.46, which is roughly 20 seconds difference between the process end time and the clock out start time. So here is the difference that the option of 
use actual time for registration makes. If that is on, the time will be actually tracked to when we clicked on report button, start button and clock out button. If that option is off, certain times, for example, an end time of your process job will be linked to your clock out time directly. Before we move on to the job device itself, let's take a look at default device filters. Right now it's wide open, but if we would like to filter available jobs to either a specific resource group, resource or production unit, we can do so by making selections through those drop boxes. Now let's take a closer look at the terminal itself. For that, I will navigate to production control, manufacturing execution, job card device. <clears throat> the first screen that I will see is my login screen. So that's where I can use either my personal ID or my badge ID to log in. Remember, if we turned on single user option on, that selection would be grayed out and you would be only able to log in with an ID of the worker that is linked to your user. Once we log in, we can see a clock in uh, prompt that as is asking us for our absent reason. The reason being here is because our standard profile for our time and attendance employee has working time set uh, from seven to three and we are outside of these. Therefore, the system is asking us why we were absent and we were not clocked in around 7 a.m. in the morning. So I'm going to select one of the options here, for example, doctor's appointment. Once that selection is made, we're now in the main screen of our job card terminal. On the left hand side, we see some actions that would allow us to navigate. For example, <clears throat> we can go to a previous job by clicking on the previous job button or the next job to come back. We can also do the start job. And if you remember from our setup screen, when we had the configure uh, barcode scanner option to yes, now we see a job scan job ID field would allow us to enter either manually or by scanning a barcode a job ID to navigate directly to it. In the main screen over here, we see information about the currently selected job and it might not be necessarily started job. It gives us a picture of the item being manufactured. It gives us the quantity that are on the production order, the quantity that we already started, the quantity that we already reported, 34, the status of this particular job right now, which is stopped, and also some details about the item. On the right hand side, we can see some uh, indirect activities and filtering options, which we will go one by one. First one is your breaks. When we click on break, we have a either break from work or break from lunch option. Both of those are indirect activities that are linked to a one break group. Let's take a look at the setups behind it. I'm going to navigate to time and attendance, manage indirect activities, and I'm going to click on indirect activity. In here, I see the list of my indirect activities, but also I can see the category to which each of those activities belong to. And I can see the category break, and that's a category that you will see in my raw registrations when that break is registered. Highlighted here are examples of two registrations that were created as a result of user clicking either on the break from work button or break for lunch. And depending on the setups, can, those can be either paid or unpaid breaks. When we click on activity button, we can see a list of available indirect activities against which we will be able to log in our time. We can see a company meeting, department meeting, team meeting, etc. All those are indirect activities. And let's take a look at where those are set up. And we're going to navigate back to indirect activities list. And that's where we're going to see our team meeting, department, company meeting, or equipment repair or regular equipment maintenance. So those are just an examples of indirect activities that you can set up and those will become automatically available when you click on activities button to register your time against it. Let's take a look at how filter button works. Remember, we have this option turned on so we can override default filters that are set for our job device. If we're going to change it and say we're not going to apply configuration filters and we're going to change it to no, now we will be able to pick a different resource group, resource or production unit to filter jobs that are available to us when we're using the navigational buttons like previous job or next job, or when, when we're using the assign button, which we will go to next. So I'm gonna select the resource group 11110 and I'm gonna click okay. Now, as soon as I'm gonna click on assigned, I will see only three jobs that are currently available for that resource group. By selecting one, I will be able to navigate directly to it. But if I remove that filter for resource group two and clear it now, 
and go back to assigned, we will see a much larger list that shows us all the jobs that are available for any resource group, not only 1110. Once we clicked on the assigned screen, we will see the list of all the activities and we can simply switch to that job by either clicking in the top right corner or right in the middle of that square. So now we are back to that job that we just selected from the assigned screen. Let's take a look now at how the reporting of the activities works. First, in order for us to report any progress, we need to start the job. Even though, as you can see in the example right here, I already have 184 quantities started out of 184, but the report progress button is unavailable until I'm going to click on the start job. And because all the required 184 quantities have been already started, I will keep the quantity to start at zero and I'm going to click OK. Now the status of my job will change to in progress and my report progress button will become available. Once I click on that, I have an option to do two things here. I can report good quantities as well as error quantity. So let me just take an example. I'm going to report 10 quantities as good and I'm going to report two quantities as, as bad. I'm going to keep my job status still in progress because I have not completed all the activities. So the job status would remain as in progress. The options here are stop that would allow me to move on to a different job and report the progress against that or completed, which will stop the job, but it would also mark it as complete, therefore stopping any progress reporting against that job in the future. So I'm going to keep it in progress. And because I have error quantity, I can specify my error cost. Keep in mind that this field is optional. I still can report error quantities without specifying the error cost. But I think the good practice here is to do so. And I'm going to pick a machine as the error cost. Once those selections are made, so remember 10 is good quantity to our error quantities and my error cost is machine. Material machine and operator is a list of a predefined three enum values that are available out of a box. Those are not user definable. Those are uh, hard coded. Once I click on OK, my job card was actually generated and posted against my production order. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to go and highlight this production order 107 and I'm going to open it. I found my production order. I'm going to navigate to view tab of my production order and I'm going to click on all, all journals to see all the journals that were ever posted. System actually generated two job card journals. So let's take a look. The first one here is reporting the time that we spent. So we can see that it was running from 9.45 to 9.52 and the equivalent of the hours is 0.12. The second journal shows us the quantity that we reported. So we see two lines here. Why? Because we reported good and error quantities. So the first line is for good quantity, 10, right up here. And the second line is for our error quantity of 2. And if we're going to go to the general tab for our journal line, we can see that the cost here is specified as, as the machine, which is an option that we selected. Now we would like to complete this job. So I'm going to say that the remaining 140 quantities are good. I'm going to make the job status as complete and there is no need to specify an error cost because we don't have any error quantities reporting. Once that is done, the job is marked now as, as the complete and we can move on to the next job by either clicking on the next job, previous job buttons or scanning the next job ID directly from our paperwork. That would be all for today. Uh, again, very good articles written by two great guys, amazing contributors to Dynamics community. Keep on doing a great work and until the next time.